Hello, it is Hiroja Shai with Satoshi's Treasure Hunters, and happy Hu Day. The D Live key is up and available. It is July 9th, and let us talk about what's happening with the Satoshi Treasure Hunt. Okay, so before we get into the new clue for the new key, the D Live key, uh, there has been some news about some previous keys and some potential events. I am really hoping for uh, a mini hunt. I'm excited for some of the people I follow in uh, Tokyo, and we'll get into that, um, as well as some awards that have happened with some keys that have been, have been distributed. So, <clears throat> all right, so let's get on the trail, let's get on the hunt, let's get on talking about what has happened with the game uh, Satoshi Street. Okay, so from the official site, we have the second round of the Philanthropic Key has started. Uh, teams can donate for the, the next round of that key. There's a total of four keys available for this month through that uh, particular endeavor. So if your clan or as an individual is able to donate the most for that week towards the charity effort, you have uh, earned the key. In the case of the first week, uh, which ended on Sunday, uh, the Satoshi Cypher group has won that particular key. Also, if you are in Tokyo, there was a hint that was dropped July 6th. Uh, this is what the tweet stated from the official uh, Twitter account. Tokyo base hunters get ready. You can like, take your time getting your shoes on. We're getting set up. No huge rush or anything, really. So the only thing I could find that was occurring in July uh, in Tokyo that is cryptocurrency related, uh, which is something that um, we know from the past. The game makers really like their conferences and like going to them, um, mingling, uh, distributing their business cards for people. Uh, there is an event. It's like a small kind of like meetup that is occurring July 18th. So maybe something is happening around that time. The only other thing I could think of that's happening in Tokyo, and it would be weird for them to drop this hint so early, is the DevCon, uh, which is an Ethereum conference, is taking place in Tokyo in October, but I don't think that's the case. I think they, they kind of like even the smaller meetups, if you will. Uh, I think most of the Game Makers team is still in um, the Asian area. They just got done with uh, being in Taipei. Uh, before that, I believe they were in Singapore, so... There's, you know, a couple, you know, they're in there. Most of them are based in within China itself for most of the time. They, I know they split between like China and London, the States, all over. So I'm, I'm hazarding a guess uh, from based on past results, which doesn't mean future results will end up being the same. That's something that's going to happen over the weekend in Tokyo. I'm hoping for our hunters out there that they have the opportunity to participate in a mini hunt might be a little bit soon for that but who knows okay no that's no that's not what i wanted so let us find that tweet all right so the earth key that key dropped all the way back i believe like april or the last week of may it's one of the early keys that has not yet been solved. So the Satoshi Game Makers, they gave us a hint. They said, for those struggling on the Earth key, Paradala is your enemy. Don't overthink this or you'll be frustrated when you understand the simple me mechanism behind this clue. So Paradellum is the concept if you've seen something or seen imagery in an object, for example, Jesus Christ and its host. Uh, the example they give is a face on Mars, which was something from the longest time, from all the way back in the 70s, uh, to a rabbit, to a squirrel, I think, on Mars. All sorts of weird things. People say, ah, look at that on Mars. Mars always seems to be the place that they, they do this with. Uh, so maybe we're just looking too hard. Maybe we're just, we kind of have to take a step back, close our eyes, take a breather and just rethink from the very beginning, rethink everything. Um, but who knows? I, you know, seeing for a while there, especially with some new hunters coming on, um, especially some of them that have had experience in um, computer development, hacking, cryptography, that there could have been a solution considering what happened with the Ubuntu key. 
but this one seems to be really kicking people's butts. So we'll see how that goes. Now on to this particular key. Okay, so the key is called the D-Live key. The clue is called Streamy Night. Satoshi's Treasure. So, Streamy Night. Few streamers at D-Live have been enlisted as the temporary agents of the hunt. Six keys will be shared via streaming in the following week. July 9th to July 14th of this year on D-Live. Check them out and secure the keys. So, I want to talk about D-Live for a second. Um before I get into the agents and who they are, I have a link in the show notes to each of the individual agents and a little bit about the key. Uh, but first, let's talk about DLive. So DLive is one of these uh, streaming blockchain-based platforms. There's a number of different platforms out there like PeerTube, uh, VTube, I think. Um, there's a few out there trying to disrupt uh, Vimo, which has been around for a long time, I think they more cater to the film-based community, if you will, uh, even though they do have some kind of streaming component to them. Uh, Twitch is streaming, YouTube streaming. They're trying to disrupt these two big conglomerates, you will. Twitch is owned by Amazon, uh, YouTube, Google, uh, trying to disrupt the in distribution of information, really, um, as well as allowing for content creators to be able to actually earn and make a living, if you will, or have some ownership of the things that they produce. Uh, they came out of Steemit. They broke away from Steemit. Uh, they are based on the block, uh, blockchain platform. They now have their own kind of little thing. It's called DLive. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of, about them. Uh, my name is Charles Wan. I believe he was... Was he? No, that's Dan Lemur. Uh, for founder and CEO of DLive, on behalf of the DLive team, we invite you to read this welcome letter so that you can have a better understanding what DLive is. Why we're building this platform that is different from other live streaming platforms and why you should join our amazing community. Uh, the mission of DLive. Most of us started creating or watching content on YouTube or Twitch. As content creators, we work hard to entertain and bring our ideas to life. We've contributed for years and we've Traditional platforms grow from their emphases into a billion dollar company. However, what we have received in return, higher monetization bars, unfair content promotion, and fewer earnings becoming increasing because of increased platform fees. So the mission of DLive is to create a value sharing live streaming platform that empowers creators and viewers through a revolutionary award system. At DLive, we change the whole game by putting platform ownership in the hands of the users through the blockchain technology. Uh, they have a thing called uh, Leno is the, the token that they are utilizing. The users of DLive are the ones that are rewarded for their contributions as the platform grows. It doesn't matter if you're a content creator or a viewer, your contributions are valued. Unlike traditional platforms, DLive takes absolutely zero platform cuts from users, donations, and subscriptions. Instead, the economic system has been designed to revolutionize revenue distribution by rewarding the community for their contributions rather than the corporation. With your help, we are changing the status quo of live streaming for both content creators and viewers. Here is how. Uh, DLive has and will always have zero cuts, so they're not taking any percentage at all. When you stream on DLive, the platform doesn't take any of your earnings, whether it's a recurring subscription or a one-time gift. Compared to additional platforms, that take roughly 50%. This is never going to change. 90.1% of each subscription and gift will go to your wallet directly and 9.9% will go to the pool that rewards people with locked Leno points for their contribution to the network on a daily basis. No cuts is a good starting point that it, it wasn't enough for our content creators. That's why we introduced the content bonus. And on top of what you earn from gifts and subscriptions, we, you will receive a content bonus. Seven days after you, your streaming is complete, the bonus based on the number and reputation of people who have donated to your stream as well how your stream ranks for overall contributions in comparison to other streams in the same period of time. So if you're a good streamer, if people really like you, you get a little bit more. If you're watching streams anyway, why not make some money? Viewers engagement is essential to any content sharing platform. However, traditional platforms have been ignoring viewers' contributions while they're making tons of money from viewers' engagement, you know, from the sharing, liking, comments, things of that nature. Convert, uh, even fan work, fan art, t-shirts, you know, things that revolve around the community. Conversely, DLive not only appreciates viewers' involvement, but also directly rewards viewers for watching, chatting, gifting, and sharing content. 
So you can give stickers, some of the same stuff that you see on Twitch and YouTube you can do on VLive. On top of everything mentioned above, you can gain asset access to additional functionalities by locking Leno points and be rewarded for their contributions every day. If you lock your platform currency in Leno points, you'll be able to participate in guiding the direction of the platform, such as product development and governance decisions, receive rewards for participation, and lock premium services on DLive. For instance, users who lock their Leno points will be able to participate in daily questionnaires and vote on decisions relating to the network and receive rewards for their participation paid out on daily from the 9.9% of all gifts and paid subscriptions. So that little cut goes to basically the community people have chosen to set aside their Leno points and hold instead of, you know, cashing out. How is it all? How is this all possible? How does the DLive make a profit? DLive is built on the test version of the Leno blockchain. A decentralized autonomous content ecosystem, which creates new Leno points daily. The amount of points is designated between um, 0.2 to 9% annually and is calculated based on the network consumptions. These points are then distributed to the infrastructure service providers, application developers like DLive, validators, and the users who contribute to the network. This is the mechanism and is the reason why DLive can seemingly give back to the users of the platform and focus on building and rewarding the user community. Uh, generating profit is not DLive's primary goal this time. There are various ways of generating income to ensure that the platform is sustainable. DLive's the developers utilize the Leno blockchain. We will be compensated as an app developer via Leno app awards. Other potential sources of incomes include providing premium services and adding advertising opportunity on the platform. DLive's current focus is on user growth and development of a strong community. So they're going to have advertisers eventually, and I guess they can go from there as far as uh, content distribution and you know who gets the ads and their cut but basically because they participate on this blockchain they're validators they're probably mining or something to that extent they're getting rewarded in that fashion the goal of DLive at this time is not to turn profit but rather focus on user growth this is not uncommon in the tech industry for example many tech companies are not profitable in the early stages um, does it all sound good to you so this is the platform um, the Satoshi Treasure Hunter game makers have spoken about the fact that, not hunters, but Satoshi Treasure game makers, have spoken of the fact that they're going to be doing these team ups with different um, platforms, advertisers, and companies. Um, they've already done it with Binance in a couple different ways um, with a charity, the Philanthropic Key, and the Hint with a Dionysus Key. You had Binance in there a little bit. Uh, you have the mini hunt that took place around the Asian um, blockchain conference um, in which um, Binance was one of the big speakers. Uh, now you have DLive, which is this uh, attempt to be a decentralized crypto uh, blockchain uh, based platform for content distribution. And I imagine there will be similar team ups as the game goes on. I'm glad this is happening. We're kind of waiting to see when they would do this, particularly with some of the Bruja with some of the marketing keys, particularly the cult and clan key uh, being kind of very market oriented. People are very ugh, about that particular one. Um, the Easter egg one, the LePong key, where I get a purchase in order to be able to obtain the particular QR code, even though that the funds did go to the person who first saw that key. Uh, there was like a little uh, uh, within the community, and we t I've talked about this in previous um, episodes. Uh, and even with the charitable one, with the Binance one, people are like, they, they don't want to purchase the keys. They want to earn them, if you will, by using their creativity, brain, and being able to be able to unlock these puzzles. Um, but for this particular key, uh, the way the nature of it is built around, I like the fact that it's very, um, a lay person can do this. You just have to watch these streamers, uh, obtain the, and I'll break down how you obtain the, the components for the key, and you'll be able to participate, earn the key for your clan, earn the key for yourself if you're still hunting by yourself. Um, things of that type, particular nature. So that's what DLive is. It's a uh, blockchain-based content creator trying to get into this space. Um, they spun off kind of like in, from Steemit, if you will. Um, I'm not sure that's true. I, I think they have some tangible ties to Steemit. 
Um, but they're just one of those ways of trying to be able to decentralize all those things. And they've been in the news because of PewDiePie. He is a big YouTuber, gamer, Twitcher. Uh, he also streams here on the live and um that really kind of blew up the platform um it was slowly developing particularly heavily in the gaming community but with pewdiepie coming on um a lot more people began to become participants in this platform and i imagine it's going to still continue to grow as well and really kind of compete against uh youtube and twitch particularly with some of the different for various reasons people have been uh, demonetized VLive also t tweeted out that they're participating in this particular contest. And it's this is one of the things where you don't kind of want to skip in this game. And I personally did and had to go back. Um, but they had a blog post that they posted. And I'm going to read it. So it's DLive times Satoshi's treasure joining the treasure hunt. So this was linked to their tweet that they tweeted out that they're participating in this and that they're going to have these keys. So DLive is partying with Satoshi's Treasure. Satoshi Treasure is a treasure hunt where a 1 million prize in BTCs hidden away can be unlocked by collecting 400 different keys. Keys are unlocked by completing quizzes, puzzles, and various other objectives. Six DLive streamers will each have one different key and they'll be awarding to those who are worthy to tune in their streams this week to get a head start. Only six keys can be unlocked on DLive. To hunt for the other keys, check out the Satoshi Treasure website. Time period to find the DLive keys is July 8th to July 14th. So what you need to know, there are six keys are hidden with DLive. Here are the clues. These are the pictures of the streamers. This one right here is different from the website. After completing the objective, objective required to unlock a key, you'll get one QR code and one passphrase to unlock the key. Most clues and access to other puzzles will unlock other keys that are available on Satoshi Treasure website. The first individual group to unlock four and get the keys win the $1 million prize in money, which is uh, distributed in BTC. This right here is what trip people up because when we go to the sites, to the clue, to the various agents, there's a different one for that particular agent. So here are the different DLive uh, streamers. This one right here, Enforcer, says it right in his name. This is Kang Gaming. Uh, we'll get back to him in a moment. And again, there'll be a link in the show notes to each of these particular uh, agents. Right here. So it was different. This is a different one than um, which was posted in the DLive one. So you had, if you were doing a res reverse uh, engine search, you weren't going to find it. You had to do the reverse engine search uh, search engine search uh, from the uh, D Live icons there, breaking them up, and you'll be able to find that individual. Flower, or not flower, but flow driver. This one has my favorite name which is Virtual Bacon One. And it just makes me laugh. I like anyone that has a handle that has bacon in it. This is Lieutenant, or LT Zonda. Um, he is married actually to Flow Driver. And this is Agent Six is Gaza. So you have to go to these guys' channels, find out when they're streaming, and watch their channels for them to release the keys. Now, Kang Game actually did his to tonight. Um, I was able to catch the QR code. He streams uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time um, every day. We'll be doing so throughout the week. He stated that there's going to be five QR codes, you have to piece them together, and then a passphrase on the last day. So it means like four QR codes you have to piece together, I'm assuming using Shamir's uh, secret handshake, and then the passphrase. So the um, QR codes, no doubt, is going to lead to the decryptor page, and the passphrase is what unlocks it. This is the first one for Kang Game, right here. 
So that's it. Um, that's pretty much the show. We have a new clue. Uh, it's called the Eli Key. It is one of very few rare keys, but I imagine increasing. It has um, multiple keys associated with it. We had the Hunter Key, which we failed to achieve all three. We have the Zero Knowledge Key, which uh, one key has already been distributed towards. Uh, we have there's three keys associated with that. We have the Philanthropy Key, which has uh, four keys associated with that. And then we have this key, which has six. And then the cult key, which there was a mini suspension of, no doubt it has some keys, however many times they do it, associated with that. So we're getting.